they tested regularly. And by our calculations, I think it's far enough in the past where this is no longer classified. By our calculations, they were about 50%. I know uh, Don Kerr, a good friend of mine, is probably going to throw me in jail for this. But, but anyway, they regularly tested their ASAT. By our calculations, they were about 50% successful. That was the good news. Well, I had uh, the privilege of going to the Soviet Union uh, shortly after I retired with a delegation of military. And of course, the wall had come down. And our job was to try and inculcate the Soviet uh, military hierarchy with supporting a constitution as opposed to uh, the uh, chairman of the Communist Party. And I ran into a gentleman who was their space senior officer, and I mentioned that he said, and I commented about their successor. And he said, oh, Joe Kiaprowski, as he said, uh, like a Soviet would, uh, you are so wrong. He said, you often fly by uh, to look at something. Well, those were flybys. We were virtually 100% successful. <laughs> well, I don't know if he was bragging or, or uh, telling the truth, but I, I took him at his word. One of the things that I did, because we had no way of taking on the Soviet eyes, and they had a great capability to take ours out. I mean, we virtually, with, uh, there were arguments among the intelligence community of how many ASATs they had. Those ran from, you know, about that many to two or three times that many. And uh, we didn't have that many lower orbiting satellites that uh, could survive and provide us any intel if we got into a dust up, say, in, in NATO and they wanted to blind us. So that was important to me. And, but I, I would like to talk just a little bit about the, the three components uh, under the Unified, uh, Army space, Navy space, and Air Force space. Of course, Air Force space was dominant with uh, General Katina uh, right in my backyard. We had a very collegial relationship. Uh, but the thing that I value most and I look back on uh, creating, or at least asking General Gabriel, General Harris to think about how we could nurture somebody that would be competitive in this dominant process for space command. Uh, what I got was independent uh, straight talk from my air component commander. And I had been an air component commander under General Bob Kingston uh, in uh, CENTCOM. And, uh, and I found out how valuable it was, at least from my perspective, to tell the general what he ought to hear instead of not what he wanted to hear in, in a lot of cases. And, uh, and that's what I found from my Navy component, who was Admiral Frost. I don't know if he's in the audience, but uh, oh, there he, there's Frosty. Uh, a really valued uh, commander of Navy Space Command. Uh, and then there was a, a colonel, an Army colonel named Ronan Ellis, who was extraordinarily bright and Every day had a great idea about how to improve uh, support to the troops. In fact, Ronan had the foresight to buy 200 sluggers uh, probably two years before Desert Storm occurred, uh, just on the idea that the Army was going to need these things, even though they didn't have the good sense to buy them. And I remember touring uh, the Unified Commands at the time, showing commanders uh, such as Wally Nutting in Korea a slugger, how it worked, and his comment was, you know, that's really nice, but we use maps. Uh, maybe you could let me have one or two during the next exercise so we can try it out. So that was basically the reception, although I give the Army credit for recognizing GPS before the Air Force. It was a lot easier to buy a, than a $200 slugger than it was reconfigure a, a, an F-16 and rewire it and integrate it for perhaps a million dollars. So the Air Force is probably the slowest in coming into it. But anyway, I valued greatly the independent counsel I got from Admiral Frost, Ronan Ellis, and General Katina. They didn't tell me what I wanted to hear. And the nice thing about General Katina not being my deputy commander of Air Force Space Command, well, I would write his performance report and therefore control his future. His performance report was written by the chief. So he could be independent and not worry about making me mad. Uh, which I don't think he ever did. But I think that was a very, very important uh, thing that happened on my watch. Uh, I must say I'm the only commander of, of uh, Unified Space Command that didn't wear both those hats. Uh, 
so it didn't last very long, but I, I certainly valued it. Uh, just a couple other comments. Uh, space was not well uh, known by operators uh, during that period of time. Uh, I put uh, theater warning terminals uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, I found out that my officers, uh, that the equipment was stored in the closet, and the officers were calling coffee to the command center. Uh, when I offered one to uh, uh, St. Pack, uh, he said he really didn't need one. Uh, so missile warning was not much appreciated. But in fact, it wasn't appreciated until Desert Storm. And that's where my end and I'm going to take some